balance of payments once tanvi was sitting idle just looking at her economics textbook but not reading anything there was a 100 rupee note by her side which all of a sudden started talking to her about the economic chapter she was studying hello tanvi aren't you able to concentrate on the chapter you are reading yes i tried reading this chapter but i am unable to understand it isn't it about balance of payments maybe i can help you understand this chapter yes it would be a pleasure to learn from you yes i too would explain how me and billions of my siblings run the economy of the country during the 1980s developing countries average rates of economic growth either declined or became stagnant balance of payments constraints became increasingly binding priorities shifted from economic development to achieving external balance mostly through restrictive macroeconomic policies our economy was a closed economy but now our economy is an open economy wow that's amazing information you got there can you tell me the features of an open economy sure an open economy is one which allows free flow of labor capital and goods amongst other countries there are three broad features of an open economy one consumers and firms have the opportunity to choose between domestic and foreign goods this is the product market linkage which occurs through international trade two investors have the opportunity to choose between domestic and foreign assets this constitutes the financial market linkage 3 firms can choose where to locate production and workers to choose where to work this is the factor market linkage india an economy in simple words an open economy is one that trades with other nations in goods and services and most often also in financial assets so india is an open economy but our currency is the rupee whereas other countries have other currencies so how is trade carried out between nations what is the platform they conduct trade on trade using currency and gold when goods move across national borders money must move in the opposite direction at the international level there is no single currency that is issued by a central authority foreign economic agents will accept a national currency only if they are convinced that the currency will maintain a stable purchasing power without this confidence a currency will not be used as an international medium of exchange and unit of account since there is no international authority with the power to force the use of a particular currency in international transactions but i've heard that gold is also used at international transactions could you please explain that yes governments have tried to gain confidence of potential users by announcing that the national currency will be freely convertible at a fixed price into another asset over whose value the issuing authority has no control This other asset most often has been gold or other national currencies. There are two aspects of this commitment that has affected its credibility. The ability to convert freely 
in unlimited amounts and the price at which conversion takes place. Is there an authority who controls the working of these international trades? Yes, the International Monetary System has been set up to handle these issues and ensure stability in international transactions. A nation's commitment regarding the above two issues will affect its trade and financial interactions with the rest of the world. Thanks a lot. I hope you're around if I need further help. Yes, it has been pleasure to be of your help. I'll always be there to guide you if you think of me. Thus, I can conclude in the following manner.